And welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. Uh, I'm Andrew Kraft. Remember, about this time last hour, we brought you that live update out of Ventura County uh, with fire and law enforcement officials about containment efforts right now for the mountain fire, which is raging at about 10,000 plus acres. Fox 11 in Los Angeles still on top of this story. Let's watch. Just at nine o'clock this morning, and now we're at over 10,000 acres, and we're looking at these homes that are just destroyed. Firefighters powerless to do too much because they're pretty much overwhelmed as well. And, and the winds, the winds can carry these embers over two miles, two and a half miles, they said. Mm -hmm. What happens, there's like a fire tunnel, and this tunnel carries those embers, and when the tunnel stops, the, the embers just drop where they're at. That's how they described it at the news conference there. Um, they, they said they did upstaff. They did prepare. They knew these winds were coming. But still, Alex, when you have winds and Mother Nature take over like this, you're just pretty much outmanned, so to speak. There's only so much you can do. And in some cases, you just have to try to triage and limit the damage, which is what they're doing here by essentially letting these fires burn, but also trying to stop um, any potential other fires and stop embers from moving. And you see in there, it looks like a garage that's on fire and then you see those those cars uh, going up in flames as well um you know it, it looks like a movie scene it looks like backdraft remember that old movie and and to see all of this happening look like there may have just been a water drop there um it, it's just it's so haunting. devastating it's it really haunting. is it is it oh, is yeah. haunting and, and very depressing um to see it and to think about you know all the memories and and mm -hmm. somebody's whole life being inside there you know, as we look at this, and Ellis, as a reporter, you've covered many a fire. Um, I, I've personally known people who've lost their homes in a fire, and it's one of those situations where it's so unexpected. Uh, you may remember a fire in Malibu. There was a, it's called, it was called the Malibu Castle, and it was owned by a friend of mine named Lily, and, and firefighters were able to pull a few things out. She had a painting of Elvis or a jacket of Elvis that they were yeah. able to bring out and save, but really, they were able to save so so few things and you think of people having to rebuild their lives with their memories and uh, their loved ones around them as they have lost so much of the physical things that we're so attached to and have, have built throughout a lifetime. Uh, you're looking at the different spots of this fire here. Uh, I'm so moved by our helicopter um, team that was talking about the fire having jumped the 118 freeway and that was the game changer. It was now into the area of density of homes here and uh, them having to rush through with evacuations to get people out of those communities. Yeah, and, uh, and, and how quickly that all was moving and we saw some of that live on the air right here on Fox 11. Um, I was here uh, working on Good Day LA this morning talking elections and our coverage of this all started um, 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning and it is still continuing now. We've been in special coverage all day long uh, and uh, as we approach the top of the hour, uh, we are going to join you um, for our live special breaking news coverage, not only on Fox 11, but also on Fox 11 Plus Channel 13. So we're going to pause for a moment as our simulcast begins on both of our networks. Now we go to more breaking news. We begin with that breaking news in Ventura County. Welcome to a special edition of the Fox 11 News at 5. I'm Alex Michelson. And I'm Christine Devine. We're showing you information on the mountain fire. It's exploded to more than 10,000 acres. Dozens of homes are destroyed. Sky Fox is live over the area of Camarillo, where we have seen so much devastation. You see some of those pictures right there. We're looking at homes that have just burned to the ground. And with that, we do want to officially welcome you to our breaking news coverage on Fox 11. I'm Christine Devine here. And I'm Ellis Michelson. Uh, welcome inside. Here's what we know at this hour. The mountain fire started just before 9 o'clock this morning. It has exploded in size to more than 10,000 acres. Dozens of homes have already been destroyed, at least. Those are the ones we've counted. Mandatory evacuation orders are in place. Multiple agencies are battling it right now. Let's go to reporter Haley Winslow, who is there on the ground bringing us updates there. Haley. Hey, Christine and Alex. Yeah, we're on Marine View Drive, and there are five or six homes that are either in 
engulfed or fully destroyed. Not much left. This house completely flattened by the fire. Uh, just, just a chimney, and then a couple of uh, of embers burning. But other than that, just completely burned. This whole cul-de-sac here on Marine. We're in our time with Haley's true. signal right there. We hope to get back to her when we uh, have a little bit better picture. You're looking there from Sky Fox, though, and you see all these different areas now that are burning. And as, as it starts to get a little bit darker, Christine, you really get a sense of all the different um, sort of separate little fires that are happening. Mm -hmm. I think when it gets dark, it just feels so much more ominous because the fire stands out so much. But you can see right there by that map how widespread this fire has burned. And keeping in mind with those fire tunnels, they say, that can carry the embers more than two and a half miles, you think every home is at risk. Now, the 118 freeway is an area of concern. They want to keep the fire out of the 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 route there, that, tr that the major transportation route there. That's the 118 there. The 101 was below it there. Uh, you know, you think of all the trucks that are going through there. Uh, that is a big agriculture area there. That's the 126 you're looking at. Uh, the communities of concern also uh, to the north, Santa Paula and Satakoy. Those are other areas where they do not want that fire to spread. They have agencies coming in from all over, different regions coming in to help battle this fire. And again, they use the word upstaffed. They use the word prepared. Uh, we knew from our own weather team here that the winds were going to happen on Wednesday and carry through to Thursday. So it's not a surprise. Just Mother Nature has you overwhelmed. And, uh, and you certainly see that from pictures like this. Look at this live picture of this home uh, going up in flames uh, piece by piece. Uh, we do see them putting some water on it to try to limit the damage, try to potentially stop some of the embers. But it's going to be hard. To, uh, to fully protect that home, which looks like it's been seriously structurally damaged. Uh, Adam Kruger is taking a look at, at our weather. And, and Adam, the last few days, we've been so busy talking about the Dodgers and talking about the election, yep. that you've kept bringing this up, <laughs> that fire danger was coming on Wednesday, and it's no joke. Yeah, I mean, we knew there was going to be this one-two punch. So we had the moderate Santa Ana wind Sunday into Monday, and then we knew this next one was going to be stronger. That's exactly what we're seeing today. Today, the worst of it, tomorrow still windy and still dry, but the worst of the winds actually this morning, I would say, because already it's backed off a little. And that's not, you know, saying we're in the clear at all. It's still windy, still dry. Uh, here's a look at forecast wind gusts in the next hour, which gives you a good idea that still we're going to see gusts over 35, 40, 45 for a lot of these areas in Magenta. I've been focused on that Camarillo area a lot during our coverage here this afternoon, obviously because that's where the big fire is. But I also want to point out as we look farther east into the Inland Empire and Orange County, still these areas are seeing weather conditions just like what they have over towards Camarillo. It's just that there hasn't been a fire out here. We hope that continues to be the case. But still, if something were to spark somewhere else, it could spread very rapidly like what we're seeing around Camarillo right now. Uh, I'll mention, I was looking at the, every five minutes, there's a weather station at the Camarillo Airport. puts out reliable weather data. So I was looking back at that today, and this morning, wind gusts were consistently over 45, peaking as high as 62. Since 2.30 this afternoon, wind gusts have been 45 or less during that entire stretch. So that's telling us that the winds are already past their peak, but again, it's still dangerously windy and the air is still very dry. So Santa Ana winds that blow towards the ocean, when they come over the mountains, they go downhill. And not only is it windy, but the air, when it goes downhill or descends, it gets even drier. So we have that very low humidity as well. It's 21% humidity out towards Camarillo right now. Here's a look at 10 o'clock tonight. Again, the same pretty much scenario is playing out. Even through the night, it's going to be windy. Notice as we go through the day Thursday now, we do expect some improvement, but still the red flag warning, the wind Wind alerts all continue through the day on Thursday. We expect by Thursday evening dramatic improvement in terms of the wind speeds. And then another thing we're going to see help out by Friday is the winds change direction back to an onshore wind, which means the humidity will go up. But again, it's the fire weather warning that continues until 6 p.m. Thursday. The worst of it, though, the National Weather Service highlighting that from now to 9 a.m. tomorrow, we're in the particularly dangerous situation portion of this red flag warning. So that's the worst of it, but still the threat is with us through the end of the day on 
on Thursday. And we pointed this out earlier. I'll just bring it up once again. We have these widespread wind alerts, wind advisories like a category here, and then high wind warning is up another notch. That's where the most extreme winds are. And like we're seeing in Camarillo right now, it's the same type of winds and weather conditions playing out in some other parts of Southern California. So we need to remain vigilant and be very cautious because, again, if something were to spark really anywhere else in Southern California, we could see something like this uh, playing out. So again, winds gust 60 plus still possible in these yellow areas and more so up to 45 in the tan areas. We'll get a little more into our forecast in the seven day a bit later in this broadcast. All Back right. To you. We will be on alert through tomorrow. Yep. All right, Adam, thank you so much. We want to show you some scenes from our reporter Haley Winslow, who was on four different locations here in the Camarillo Heights area among the streets that she was on Marine View Drive, Vista Del Mar, where she saw homes just destroyed. The top of your screen is a live shot that you're looking at as well as we look at Camarillo Heights, which is south of the 118 freeway in the Camarillo area. And just some devastating scenes to witness. Although, Alex, you see something like that, and it looks like there are firefighters there on the scene. Yeah, you can see them putting on mm -hmm. water, um, but they were not able to save that particular home. As, as far as we can tell, they were not able to save about dozens of homes. Here's a look at another one of them. Uh, you can see here, shot by our photographer Sam Dubin, uh, just the, the fire weather and the extent of those winds. And as we look at another picture here, you see right in the middle of that neighborhood, um, so many flames and, and just the whole um, area just engulfed. What a sight. As you look at those firefighters there in action, you think of all that they are taking in as they breathe and the hard work that they have before them. Much respect for them there on the job. We see Haley Winslow there walking in that shot, just checking out the different structures. And for those of you that may be watching and you know people who own these homes or you yourself are watching your own home burn to the ground, we do want to send out our thoughts to you and to let you know that our heart is with you as we watch this devastation here in Southern California. And Alex, I'm thinking how we talked about the winds just a day or two ago, and to witness this is truly devastating for our, our neighbors and friends. Yeah. I mean, yesterday it was all about the elections. A couple of days ago it was all about the Dodgers. And right now it is all about these fires uh, and really overwhelming stories to cover each in their own unique way. This one obviously the most devastating, especially for people that live in this neighborhood. Um, so there's uh, another live picture. As you can see, the buildings there are burning. So as the sun will be setting soon here in Southern California, the visual is going to definitely change as it gets dark out there and you see the visuals of the fire against the night sky. And you realize that this fire in the Camarillo Heights area of Ventura County, this mountain fire, is 0% contained. And I'm reminded, Alex, that we started out this morning with a fire in Malibu yep. with a structure or two damage there. Apparently they did enough work there that's not of concern anymore because we're not covering it. And right. then you have this it's separate fire. They don't have a cause on this one. That's gonna take some time to figure out the cause. It started as a brush fire. Firefighters arrived on the scene and they knew they had a problem right away. And hopefully we can get that Malibu video to you a little bit later in the show talking about um, the, the broader issue of these fires. And, and that is part of the danger uh, right now with the conditions that Adam talked about. Um, it's not just being felt in, in Moore Park. Uh, that is being felt all over Southern California and especially in some of our fire-prone areas. There is very real danger that scenes like this could be happening near you. Um, so if there's any time to be extra cautious, um, to not try to spark anything, uh, to make sure that your brush clearance is in place, that you've done all the extra work to help protect your own property, uh, this would be that time. Uh, because uh, we are not out of the woods yet in terms of this weather. And, and I'm reminded as I look at this issue of another story we've been covering, that is fire insurance in California. Yep. We've had these insurance companies say, we're getting, you know, we, we can't do this because of all the wildfires that we see in Southern California. And rates for people who live in fire prone areas have gone up tremendously because insurance companies are dealing with situations like this and such tremendous loss. And in some areas, they're just not giving people insurance. They're saying we're not going to do it. And that's been uh, particularly problematic uh, for people as well as there's a real fight on with that industry in terms of how to regulate it here in California. 
Um, uh, in terms of the funding this firefight, though, we know the governor, Gavin Newsom, has already asked FEMA for assistance on that, and FEMA has already ex formally accepted that, even though this fire is only, you know, six or seven hours old. Uh, that process has already begun, which will help with the funding of the fighting of this particular fire. We talk about the Santa Ana winds, nothing new to Southern California. They are calling this one strong and particularly dangerous. Uh, they've had precautionary power outages for thousands of residents as well. Gusts clocked at 70 miles per hour, up to 100 miles per hour. Strong, widespread, long duration Santa Ana wind event. Could be a very long night and long Thursday here in Southern California as those winds are going to be extreme as well through 9 a.m. but continue to 6 p.m. So, Alex, as we watch this, we know that we have some serious concerns in Southern California tonight. Yes, indeed, in many different neighborhoods as well. Um, but the relatively good news, if you look at that picture, which is obviously a horrible picture, but from Sky Fox, you do see some areas burning, but you don't see widespread 15, 20 homes burning at the same time out of control, like what we were seeing earlier today. So a, a little bit of progress as we near nightfall here uh, in Southern California, this neighborhood here, Ventura County. Uh, we do know some school districts in the area have canceled classes for tomorrow and for Friday. Probably wanted to give people time through the weekend just to regroup because when you have fires like this, chances are people in this area, it's, 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 it's a smaller area, you know, they might know one another mm -hmm. or know somebody affected by these fires or who's had to evacuate. Likely do. Uh, Susan Harrisuna, our reporter, is there on the ground. Um, Susan has moved. What are you seeing from your perspective? Okay, so now we're in a location uh, not far, actually, from where the news conference was. We're on Valley Vista and Alviso in what they call the Las Posas Hills. This is still part of what they call the Camarillo Heights. But we got word that there was a house burning. In fact, we came upon a sheriff's deputy, a little, a little bit uh, of an overreactor in my estimation. But he wouldn't let us stop here because, no, there's a, a house burning. But, in fact, what we found were crews that were uh, refilling their water tankers so they've come around to do that we do still see a lot of smoke in the air the wind is still blowing it's certainly not as heavy and the gusts aren't as heavy as they had been but uh, the wind is still blowing it's starting to get a little cooler I feel like the humidity um, is going up which is good news for firefighters a little bit of that sea breeze is coming in to create more humidity for the area but yeah a lot of areas are like this community where you will get to a certain point and you'll get to a sheriff's deputy that says no this area is closed off now you may recall from that news conference lots of areas are under an evacuation order and um, this appears to be one of them we're not seeing anybody that is outside watering their grass or their roofs or anything but surely a lot of activity a lot of smoke everywhere I look we, we, you know we were told basically when we were looking for another active area to go towards we were told that um, just follow the black smoke now of course the Sun is setting so it's going to be harder to follow the smoke but we can um, We'll hopefully we'll be seeing some of the uh, the fires more clearly because right now it's it's a little difficult. There's definitely areas that are still burning. We just are having trouble getting to it. But yeah, this is just one quiet neighborhood in the Camarillo Heights area. And right now, I'll just throw it back to you. I mean, it's it's a little frustrating right now because it's clear that the fire danger is still high. We're not finding anything right now. Back to you. All right, Susan. Thank you. As we took a look at this aerial shot here, you can see the number of homes that are on fire and also firefighters who've staged in the area as well. Let's go on the ground to reporter Gina Silva. Gina? Yeah, we're in the 100 block of Avocado Place, and this is what we're seeing. All of those embers that are flying miles and miles away, and they're starting up these fires. Now, this was a playhouse. We're in the home of the Anderson family. This is Roger. Roger, it's been a very difficult day for you, I understand. Yes, it has. Yeah. What are you doing? I know you guys are going back and forth. Uh, spraying water, yeah. kicking dirt. <laughs> She's feeling like there's nothing else to do. I think yeah, it's I guess we're done as much as we can, and we're ready. Got it. Time to go. It's, we've been there, done that, so 
We've got everything under control. The fire department's out front. They've got their big trucks and their big hoses, and they've been working to Brankin across the street, across the street. So everybody's doing the best we can. Yep. I saw that in the front of your home, that area got burned as well right. as your, your car. I think one of your sons described it as marshmallow because yeah. it's white, and now it's part of it is brown. Yeah, it looks like a bur burnt marshmallow. Yeah, yes. it does. That's kind of, maybe, to I toasted. maybe I should leave it that way now, not, <laughs> not repaint it. It might be nice. I you don't know, know, both of you are having a really good attitude despite everything that's going on. But across the street, I showed you the video right. of that home that yeah. burnt down. Yeah, um, and, and it's just, it's, it, it's, it's terribly sad. sad. I've got three friends now that have called me and said their houses are on fire that I know from here. And it's just, it's sad. It, it just really is. And I we're fortunate it, so far. Yeah. I think it was fortunate, too, that I decided to drive by as I was leaving Oxnard from work. And, and I drove by here and saw the neighbor's house. The backyard was on fire. And that's when I went and got him. And we drove up here. And I, I think what we did hopefully helped. Now, well, the I'm, winds are, are still strong, but obviously they're starting to die down. So that's a good sign. But earlier, describe what it was like. Oh, just blowing you over. I mean, you, had to, you couldn't stand up straight. But And that's what happens in east winds. And when a fire goes, everything gets... And it's worse if it was just wind. We wouldn't think of it as being that bad until a tree fell on your house. You know, so it's just one of those things. And there's nothing we can do but keep doing. And that's what we're going to do. Your thoughts for your neighbors who've lost their homes? Yeah, it's, I couldn't even imagine what's going through their heads now, right now. I, a lot of them aren't here, so they're not knowing what's happening, but it, it's got to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you guys are busy, and you're doing your work, and I don't want to keep you longer. Well, thank you so much for speaking for with us. Thank you for coming by. Yeah, okay. And uh, I don't know if, uh, Perfect, I well, think we yeah. lost communication, so I'm going to send it back to you guys. And... Um, We'll stay here with the Andersons. Just be careful going up. Gina Silva, thank you uh, for that reporting there. Uh, hopefully they're all able to stay safe. They got quite the attitude there. Haley Winslow continuing our team coverage now. There she is. Haley. Yeah, it's getting really hard to see, especially because it's getting so dark here. Uh, we're still on Marine View where there are five houses here completely destroyed, two of them engulfed in flames. Uh, right down the street from Vista Del Mar Avenue, you can see this house is a complete loss. It's been on fire. They've been working on it, pouring water on it for the last 30, 45 minutes here. The only thing that I can make out, other than what's sort of left of one car in this three-car garage, is this little toy car. It's really hard to see on the right side of the house, but it's just so sad to see, <laughs> of all things, some child's toys out in the yard. Um, there's also a few cars parked out on the other side of the fence that look like maybe the homeowners, you know, were able to get home and get stuff and then move their cars out of the way. Um, you know, it gives me hope at least that they had a chance to get some stuff out and that they, they had a little bit of a chance to prepare. Um, and those cars are still okay. But yeah, the moon's coming out, the sun's setting. It's getting dark, and uh, there are still, I would say, probably now 25 homes that we've seen just with our own eyes, Sam and I, um, that are on fire. And uh, the condition's still bad. The wind's still really gusting, um, you know, smoke billowing up, and it's just constant devastation, you guys. Haley, I, I feel your emotion as you talk about what you're seeing there and that feeling of, as you say, constant devastation. Uh, as a reporter, does this just stay with you for a long time, what you've witnessed here? Yeah, I mean, how do you, I mean, how could it not, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, it's not me. I feel so bad for all these people. I mean, 10,000 acres and far from over. I mean, you just can't imagine what what it's going to turn into and um you think about like what alex was saying all the photos inside and the memories and possibly pets or people um hopefully everyone's left but yeah i mean these stories never leave us i mean you know that you've been doing this a long time too and it's um these are the ones that really stick with us they give you purpose and you know you hope that you're helping and informing people about what's going on but um it's really hard to see them the husk is completely um covered in smoke but yeah it's it's definitely hard i just you know for these people yeah in this job we have the privilege of uh, meeting people often 
on the best day of their life or the worst day of their life. Uh, we were fortunate with the Dodger coverage to be able to talk to a lot of people on the best day of their life. Uh, with this, um, you end up meeting some people on the worst day of their life, the day where they watch their home and everything they've worked for and all of their belongings go up in flames and there's nothing that they can do about it, um, which is such a, such a devastating thing for so many people. I think one of the biggest roles is that information, as Haley talked about, helping people, and that is giving out the information, for example, on the mandatory evacuations and when you see that devastation all right we can't thank fox 11 uh, enough there uh christine and alex uh really just portraying this story like they always do uh on the human level this is just so tragic for these small communities there in ventura county oh wow look at that right there you saw that beam just fall at what's left of that that home there, this is uh, an affluent area of Ventura County. Let's take this live, you see there. Uh, this is a live picture right now uh, at this home that is just charred. Can't imagine what these people are going through who have literally lost everything today as the mountain fire continues to burn. Uh, according to Fox 11 in Los Angeles, uh, it is at 0% containment still there. Uh, as this fire burns. Uh, so uh, we also have an update from the National Weather Service uh, as well here. They're giving us a sense of how strong these Santa Ana winds are. Also uh, in Los Angeles, they say with this map that thick smoke is blowing east of the mountain fire, south of Ventura to Camarillo. They say, please avoid the area if you can. If you will be driving through smoke, keep windows closed and recirculate air to reduce smoke exposure, they say. And they say you can see the smoke from space there, uh, the mountain fire continuing to burn. Uh, in the meantime here, let's take a quick commercial break. I'm Andrew Kraft. Uh, wanted to make sure you saw some of those uh, just horrific uh, images coming out of Ventura County. All of these neighborhoods going up in, in smoke and flames there because of this fire. And we'll continue to follow it throughout the course of the evening.